Our co-op is in Duluth, Minnesota. We've been around for 45 years. We have a very different market um, from the Twin Cities in that the closest co-op that's still in business to us is oh, well over an hour's drive away, and most of them are a couple hours aw uh, drive away. And we don't have any supernaturals. Sarah, knock on something. Thank you. Um, yet. And, um, but we do have Trader Joe's, or excuse me, um, Target and Walmart, and a very strong locally owned line of conventional grocers called Super One. And they do a very good job, and they just recently rebranded, and it did affect our stores in terms of um, they are doing a better job of selling our products than they used to. So um, when we look at competition, and we have been paying attention to competition because our customers keep telling us with smiles on their faces that Trader Joe's is coming to town, and they can't wait. And it's like, OK, yeah, thanks. Um, this, is, this is kind of what our mantra was. Um, except maybe for the last one, which was just mine because of my age. But um, <laughs> we knew we had to do something. We knew we had to start preparing. And so we started asking questions. And that was what I would really encourage you to do, too. If you don't do surveys in your stores on a regular basis, if you don't survey your customers, your staff, your owners, you really need to find out what they're thinking, what they want, so that you can respond and do a better job and provide that for them before someone else does. And we also realized that we needed to be at the top of our game. We needed to be better. One of the things that we brought in that's been extremely helpful in the last year is subscribing to the Mystery Shopper ser service that is provided by NCG. And this brings uh, strangers into our store three times a month. And they do an audit of our staff and by department, and they check um, sales, make sure we have our co-op deal sales up, and that the product is available, and they rate our store on cleanliness, which is hugely important. I can't stress it enough. And we get a report, and then that report gets summarized, and we share it with our board. And mostly the management team uses it as a learning tool, because we're in our stores all the time, we don't see things. We need to hear what other people are seeing. And as someone mentioned earlier today, it isn't the mid-level customer that's going to tell you. So that's why we pay for the service, because these are mid-level customers. And then they will tell us, and we get that information. And then retire is, um, as I mentioned, it's, it's not an option that you want to think about. But I can tell you from my experience that when I first moved to the Duluth area, there were 125 buying clubs in the Duluth Superior area, and there were about three dozen food co-ops up there within a, a half a day's drive. And now there are about seven food co-ops, and I think maybe less than that buying clubs. Things change. People change. You've got to keep it together if you're going to be around. What would Trader Joe's do? <laughs> Learn from your competition, extremely important. I mentioned the Mystery Shopper service in terms of assessing our customer service. We don't use it as a stick to our employees. Um, we make a point of celebrating every time someone is called out for doing a good job so that everybody knows that they got appreciated for doing a good job in the Mystery Shopper. But if someone is cited for not doing a good job, that is handled off the floor and in confidence. But it is handled, and we do, we do respect the information we get back from those surveys. Uh, we invest in a lot of training in, for our people. Um, the NCG has wonderful programs. Um, there's a Rising Stars program. I would encourage you to do that, too. And we look at. Um, the product assortment that we're selling, and we looked at those barriers that people have been talking about, and what can we do to remove some of those barriers? Because Trader Joe's doesn't have any barriers, they have Hawaiian shirts. 
So we figured out after a lot of conversations like World Cafe, which we took to annual meetings and used that format, and we talked about it in management team retreats, what was our difference? What could we do differently? And we wanted to be able to say that there was something that the supernaturals couldn't take away, and what it came down to was the co-op difference. What we are, how we're structured, what we give back to the community that they don't do, how we're going to be there when times get bad and somebody else pulls out because it isn't working for them. Even Target's laying people off, you know? Nobody stays at the top forever. So this is something that we can do as co-ops. We may change the look of our buildings. We may change whether we're old wave, new wave, third wave, whatever we are. But we're going to be around in some format. And that's the best thing we can do for our co-ops is make sure they're still around when we're not. Obviously, focusing on the co-op difference, though, was an easy thing for us to do because of our location. It's much harder to do when your major competitors are other co-ops. So I'm not even going to try to address that one. So this is our slogan. This is our story, and we're sticking to it. Sarah? I'm uh, Sarah Hannigan, the store manager at Whole Foods Co-op. I've been at the store for about a year and a half, and I don't come from the natural food grocery world or from um, the retail world either. Um, I've focused primarily on affordable housing, community partnerships, sustainability, environmental initiatives, and the likes. And um, coming into our co-op, I was able to offer a, a bit of a new eyes and a, a fresh perspective. Uh, Whole Foods Co-op's been around for 45 years, and we've you know, been quite successful in our community. Our growth trajectory is similar to the one that was up on the, uh, the slide earlier um, with Seward Co-op and many of the growths that you've seen in your stores. Um, we are looking to continue to grow in all the ways that make sense, and that isn't always sales growth. Um, as Sharon mentioned, the community piece is a big piece of what we do, and we can't do it all. So one thing that we focus on is community partnerships, and we've got community partnerships that help us promote sustainability, local farming, healthy lifestyles, and jobs training in our community. Um, we also, as Sharon mentioned, really take the, the information that we get in our surveys to heart. Our um, Mystery Shopper provides great information, and I think that those Mystery Shoppers likely shop at conventional grocers and other typical retailers in our community. So they often give us really high marks for customer service, and it's really great to see that, but it also, I think, is something that we need to, we need to look at those high marks and not just pat ourselves on the back, but think about how we can do even better, because it is that customer service that sets us apart. Um, one thing coming into a new environment uh, and a store not having come up through the ranks like many of our of our staff have is we got hit I, I was hit often with the question or the statement from staff well we've always done it that way well we've always done it that way and if we continue to do it that way we aren't going to grow and thrive in um, in the community um, we have been hemmed in in this space. We met our, met our capacity uh, just this past year, and right after we announced that we were building a second store, we initiated a remodel of our store, of our existing store. And we had a number of customers say, and owners say, well, why, are we re or why are we remodeling this store and not working, on, working towards the second store? And we were doing both because we knew that in order to stay relevant, we needed to freshen our surfaces. We needed to essentially make hay while the sun shines and um, do the best we can to continue to be fresh, continue to be relevant, continue to serve our community. And um, we didn't change our footprint at all, but we changed all of the surfaces in our store. And I think one of the best compliments that we got from many people was, wow, you widened the aisles. We didn't widen the aisles. Uh, we put in new flooring, we took down soffits, and we made a space that was originally designed to be a, a sort of small and, and cozy space, an expansive space. So you can grow 
within the same footprint. And I just want to say thanks. <laughs>